I'm getting ready to work on what looks like a perfectly healthy Xbox One X HDMI port. I've had this under the microscope and everything looks uh, just like new, really. So usually when you don't have a video signal out, you can see physical damage here or the port will just push all the way inside or wobble around. But this one, it fits just like factory and it looks brand new. So I wanted to show you a tool here real quick that might save you some time. Let's we'll see if we can get an angle where this will kind of make sense. Uh, get everything on screen here. So basically, what we're gonna do is take some measurements without opening the console up. And I'm gonna use this right here. This is an HDMI interface and they come in different forms. They're all pretty much the same thing. What they do is they plug in here and then on this end right here, I'll have to refocus this. Let's see, how are we gonna do this? So I've gotta move my monitor around so I can make this work. But we're going to have some numbers and I'll put them up on the screen here in a minute. Let's move the camera over a bit this way. These are going to be the diode mode measurements for the Xbox One X HDMI port. And every device will be similar and yet different. So you can't really necessarily transfer this to another console. Uh, but what I do is take a healthy one and get these numbers and then we'll compare it to the one that we're having problems with. So if we have no video signal, we can tell that the machine's booting up, but it's not giving us anything on the screen. Before we open it up, if we wanna get a little bit of information as far as diagnosis, we'll just take our multimeter, put it in diode mode, and that's the one where we've got the little arrow uh, up against the straight line. And we're gonna put the red probe onto this metal piece here, which is ground. And then we're gonna take the black one, and we're just gonna go across these connections here. And what you'll typically see is gonna be something in the 700 range. Then we've got a ground, and then we'll have two more in a row, and there's kind of a pattern that follows as you go across. This is 710, uh, this is 625, ground, 623, 626, ground, 625. Then you'll have another ground on the end here, so it kind of skips, but usually you go two, two numbers and then a ground, except for on this bottom row here, where we're gonna have, you'll see in the start, 625, ground, 625, 591, 548, 606. You see there's no ground there where you thought there might be. And 622, ground, 594, and 643. Now these don't have to be exactly the same number that I showed you here. They will vary a bit. And if you're not off by, you know, I don't know, fifth point, uh, zero seven or point, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of a good number here. So these things will probably range anywhere from about 545 up to 725, somewhere in that range. If you have an OL anywhere that it wasn't indicated here, or if you're showing a ground where you shouldn't, then you know that there's a problem with the port itself or could still be something on the inside. But generally when you see that these are pretty close to the numbers that we have here, you can be fairly certain that the connection for the port is okay. It's probably not physically damaged. It's possible that there is a problem with one of the filters that are in line between here and the retimer IC, but more often than not, you're looking at replacing either the retimer IC or possibly the boost IC, which is um, <laughs> fun because they don't really sell those and you have to take it off of another console. But if you're just trying to do a diagnosis and know what you're up against from the beginning, this can save you some time and it'll prevent you from telling people they need an HDMI port when there's pretty good chance, at least in this case, that that's not going to solve the problem. So I hope you found that helpful and I'll be back with uh, hopefully the repair for this console once I get that edited.